Hey, welcome to Retro Gadgets. Retro Gadgets is a sandbox game about building, painting, and coding your own retro inspired, uh, well, gadgets. But let's start from the beginning. Let's turn on this guy here and start from the boards. The boards, the board shape are the basic component of a new gadget. So to start a new gadget, you basically drag the shape that you want from the boards drawer to your workshop. The boards are containers uh, that contain a PCB and some components on top of it. It's almost like pizza making. So you can uh, Click and drag to move the components. And uh, you can add components from the other drawers here. So right now, uh, the basic uh, board starts with a power button that turns on and off the, the gadget. And now it does nothing because the gadget is, is empty, has nothing in it. And a connector. The connector is used by the multi-tool that we're going to see later. OK? So let's place our two basic uh, components here, uh, but let's maybe maybe add some an interesting shape to our uh, to our, our gadget here. So you can uh, with the left mouse button you can pick up and drag your motherboard shapes, and with the right button while you're dragging you can rotate. Uh, components and shapes by 90 degrees. Some components can be rotated by 45 degrees also, but they are special components, so it's uh, like an exception uh, that we have in some components. So now we have this uh, shape in place, but it's you see these parts are not connected. We want them to connect to be like to stick together, and to do that we use the soldering iron. The soldering iron can basically solder different shapes together if they are placed next to each other. These shapes need to snap at the specific positions, however. You cannot like solder two shapes uh, like this, okay? It just doesn't, if you go here, it doesn't, you see, it doesn't work. Only when it, the interface suggests you that a connection can be made or separated, the connection can be made. But we have a little like magnetic snapping to right position. So basically, it's basically like a, a checkboard system. So you can see when, when I move closer, it snaps into place. And, and when it does that, you know that this is a, a valid position for uh, soldering. If you want to remove um, a shape that has no components in it, you just drag it to the board drawer and it gets deleted. So now we have our shape, like our weird controller-like shape. And uh, let's do something easy but interesting. Let's add uh, from the input drawer a couple of big red buttons. OK, and we also want some output to, to play with. So we're going to pick a couple of LEDs from, from here. So what we can do, what we want to do later, is we want to like turn on the LED based on the button that we press. But they're not actually very symmetrical. So let's maybe zoom in by pressing Shift and position this uh, components in a way that is more uh, precise. Okay, now it looks almost like it's correct. Maybe we have... Oh, I think it's okay. So we have our LEDs and our buttons. If we turn on the device, now we can press the buttons. But nothing happens because there is nothing telling our gadget what to do. But there is nothing connecting the buttons with the LEDs to 
To do that, we need a CPU. Uh, of course, when the gadget is turned off, we can left click and drag to move uh, all the components. When it's turned on, we cannot drag the components anymore. We're going to drag the entire gadget, or we can activate the parts that are interactable. Now let's fix our the positioning of our button here. See, but we have to turn it off. Okay. And oh, sorry. Let's add a CPU. CPUs can be found in our miscellaneous um, drawer and come in different shapes and sides in the in future releases because now we don't have this function already in place uh, different cpus and different chips will have different functions that improve or limit the capabilities of your gadget but we're going to talk about this in a future video so what a cpu uh, component does is it is a container for a code asset a code asset is basically a text file that contains a Lua script that we can create using our multi-tool. Okay, so let's just open this guy again. So you see, when we open the multi-tool, the multi-tool connects with the gadget, and, and now it tells us select a CPU or a code asset. So we select a CPU, it gets highlighted, but it's there's something missing. Uh, here. So the CPU doesn't have a code asset. And if we look for a code asset here, where mm, the multi-tool says source, we can see that there is no code asset to select uh, because we have not created one. So to create a code asset, we have to go into our gadget setup here. A gadget setup shows some information about our gadget. Now it's a new gadget. so. The icon is not updated. There's no description and no name. We can, like, we can change the name here. We can call it silly controller. Okay. But we actually, what we want to do is we want to create a Lua asset file to start coding. So we go into our asset list. Click on Lua to create a new one, and we create a new Lua file called main. And we have our main uh, file. Okay, we can double click to start editing the code. So we want something that is executed every frame. And to do that, we need an update function. So update, um, we create a new function. So function update. So this is a standard function that is uh, executed every frame, basically. Um, and inside, we can, mm, we can create, uh, we can write some code that is executed, okay? So let's start uh, mm, from our GDT table. So the, the gadget table is uh, a table that contains all the components inside the gadget. So you can see our uh, autocomplete here, as if you type GDT, it just tells us a, a list of all the components that exist in our gadget. So we have the CPU, the first LED, the second LED, the first button, the second button, the connector, and the power button. And every one of these components has properties and method that we can access. But let's start from a very simple thing. So our LED, our the state uh, property is a Boolean. We want this to be the same as gadget led button one button state. And similarly, we want the led one to copy the state of the led button one. Now, if we wrote everything correctly, when we turn on the device, something should happen, but it's not happening. That's because we did not tell the CPU to use our main code asset. Now, the CPU contains the main code asset. When we turn on the, the gadget, if we press the buttons, the buttons turn on 
our LEDs. So this is how retro gadget works. So first you can create more complex systems. Uh, you can do a lot of different things, but this is the basics of how retro gadget coding works. Let's let's look a little bit at, because you know it's a little bit gray here, and the buttons maybe we don't want them red. Well, so we can use our airbrush here to give some color to our to our gadget. So let's first of all, it's a it's an airbrush. Let's paint our board yellow. Okay. Now we could paint it also purple if you want. Or a mix of the two. We can zoom in to paint more precisely. We can press X to snap to uh, like the Y axis and create perfectly uh, straight lines. If we keep pressing X, we can cycle between different modes. You see, uh, this is free drawing. This is uh, aligned to the horizontal axis, and this is aligned to the vertical axis, okay? So we keep pressing X until we're, we're happy. Of course, you can change the nozzle shape here, and with the, with the um, mouse wheel, you can uh, change the sides of the... of the... Um, of your... Um, of your spr spray basically until you can also basically paint a one one pixel uh, wide spray okay but let's let's go back to purple of course you can also change the color of the buttons themselves if see if see if when we go above a button with the airbrush the the cursor changes to a dot this tells us that we're basically above a component that can be colored. So if we click with the left mouse button, we can color the button of the colors that we have selected here. So you can select uh, two colors with your brush. One is the activated and selected with the left mouse button. So let's select red with the left mouse button and the second one is selected with the right mouse button so when you paint if you click left mouse button you use the left color which is the topmost color in the in the airbrush and with the right mouse button you you paint with the secondary color which is the the bottom one in the in the airbrush tool itself okay so let's just here maybe Maybe we want them lighter color. Yeah, why not? That's yeah, okay. Let, let's say uh, I like it all yellow. Just paint it yellow. Much better. Okay. You can also change the color of the uh, LEDs themselves by selecting the LEDs and changing the color uh, from a slider here. Of course, you can also control the color of the LEDs from, uh, from code, okay? But this is a very, if you don't wanna have a changing color, you see, you can, you can use the, the multi-tool to change their attributes. Like some buttons, I know, also have other properties that can be accessed. Uh, via the multi-tool. Let's see if we can access these guys. So you see, this is a LED button. So this button can also be uh, have as a light inside. So you can control the, the fact that the button is also lit or not lit. And you can add some symbols to the buttons. Uh, see, choosing from a, a list of symbols. So maybe we can do say that this is the button, uh, this is actually the button B. And this is the button A. And now we have symbols inside our buttons. And because symbols are uh, of a different uh, color, we can paint them with the right mouse button. So the left mouse button paints the button itself, and the right mouse button paints the symbol that we have created uh, 
inside of the button. Um, but the personalization doesn't end here. We have another tool in our multi-tool. Let's go back to our gadget. Um, set up, go into assets, and let's create a new image. Let's call it pixels. When we create a new, uh, we call this art asset. An art asset is basically an image with a palette, and in future version, versions of the game, it will also contain some animations. So this is a very simple, but not so simple, actually. Uh, pixel art editor. So we can go here and we can paint a little face, maybe. For our controller. OK. Of course, we can select pixels, we can move them, we can uh, like fill them with a different color, and so on. There are all the standard functions you would expect from a pixel art article. You can change palettes. Now, this is a very early implementation. We're improving that in the, as we speak. But this is basically what we want to do. And it doesn't end here. You can also go into the printer. So once you have painted, so of course, you can uh, save this asset, mm, like this uh, pixel asset, place it inside a video chip that now we did not add, and then use it in your code to create animation, sprites, to make games if you use a display and whatever. But also, you can go to the printer and print what you have created as a sticker. So stickers are basically things that you can place wherever you want on top of your gadgets. And with the tweezer, you can pick up the sticker and move it around. Okay. An interesting thing about stickers is that you can use them as stencils. So if we go here and we paint our fake controller here green, and then we remove the sticker, you see that the sticker is still yellow because it worked at basically as, uh, as a stencil. Okay, so this is, uh, there are a lot of things you can do with this system uh, by creating all your stickers. You can create, uh, first you can select multiple, like, uh, multiple sections here and print them together, like in a long strip of sticker, and, and, or you can just select one, okay? Uh, if you want to remove a sticker, just pick it with a tweezer and place it back inside the printer. One last thing about stickers is that you can import stickers from your files. So uh, there is a specific directory, which is inside your user folder in Windows, where you have to place your, uh, your files if you want mm, them to be accessible here. Directory is... Uh, Inside your user, there's a um, uh, My Games, uh, Retro Gadgets, and then there's a directory uh, for for your content. Okay, so let's just import this uh, this PNG that I created in Asprite. We are gonna need to assign a palette here now. In the in next release, what's gonna happen is it's gonna just clamp. Uh, the, the PNG palette to uh, to 64 colors uh, and create a new palette. But now we have we don't have that in place yet. Anyway, after you imported the stickers, you can edit them and you have all your stickers inside your pixel editor. And now that you have them together, you can go in our printer, select maybe my cat face and print it. And now we have Momo on top of our controller. And that's how you personalize your sticker. As a final note, 
what you can do is this game has a very important integration with the Steam Workshop. So you can go to the browser and discover all the gadgets that have been created by the community. Now we only have four gadgets because the game has not even been announced yet. Uh, so let's, for instance, download this, uh, this guy here. Okay. Oh, so I had this gadget already uh, downloaded. So let's just maybe destroy it. Okay. Let's download it again. So I can show you. So you basically uh, build, you, you subscribe and then you build it. Okay. I wanted to show you this cool VFX that we made. <laughs> you build it. And after you've built it, uh, you can. Uh, see how the gadget is made inside okay you can also check all the the code so how the gadget works but you cannot directly modify it because this is a gadget that has been created by another user and it's connected to a, a data on the same workshop so if you want to modify these gadgets you're gonna have to create a copy and modify your local copy of the gadget. Mm, now that function is not implemented yet. We're working on that in the room as we speak, but just to show you how it works. Now we downloaded this guy and we can just turn it on and play this very, this double Simon says, which I usually suck. So I'm going to be, I'm going to place it super easy. Da, 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 da. Uh, the fail. I already failed. I'm really, I'm really that bad. <laughs> anyway, so this is how it works. Okay. And, uh, well, I think, oh no, there's one less feature. One less feature that I want to show you. After you have created a gadget, Okay, yours or a gadget that you like, maybe a Tamagotchi gadget that you want to play with, or maybe even this Simon Simon says kind of cat. I don't know if that's a cat, but it's okay. If you press uh, function 11, F11, the workbench disappears and you have the gadget as a widget on top of your window screen. So you can play your gadget and fail miserably as I do as I do all the time on your window screen. So you can create a, a widget with whatever you want and you can play it on top of the other things that you're doing in Windows. So I think that is all for today. Uh, hope you's gonna you're gonna enjoy our current version of Retro Gadget and thank you for listening.